guys, welcome back to my channel and happy new year. It is January 1st, 2020, the first day of a brand new year and a brand new decade. And it is also the first day of my 2020 no buy and low buy year. In my last video, I kind of introduced the idea of a no buy for the coming year on my channel. And I gave all my reasons for wanting to do that and kind of all of my goals and a list of the things that I'm hoping to accomplish with this little life YouTube experiment. I'll leave a link to that video down in my description box in case you missed it because it kind of gives some important context to the video that I am filming right now, which is all of the rules that I have created for myself for my 2020 no buy. As I was researching various YouTube channels and YouTubers that have done no buys and low buys and kind of financial management and declutters, etc., in the past, one piece of advice that almost everybody gave about having a no buy year was to set very, very clear rules and guidelines and parameters for yourself so that you don't find yourself in a sticky situation like in March or in October or if you get a gift card or if you get tempted. So you've kind of got like a whole list of definitely not buying this, maybe I can replace these things, if then type scenarios so there's not any extra hard decisions to be made and so that you don't get caught up in a weak moment and break your commitment to yourself. So I have written down a list of very specific rules about what I can and cannot buy in the coming year and I'm going to share them all with you today partially because I'd like to be held accountable for my choices by you guys and by this channel and partially because I'm hoping to inspire some of you with some ideas if you are planning to do a no buy or a low buy year or month or experiment at any point in the near future, whenever you are finding this video. I have to quickly apologize for the state of my speaking voice. I am not a smoker. I'm not sick. I haven't been out partying. I was sick a few weeks ago and I lost my voice. And for whatever reason, I just haven't made a full recovery yet. So even though I sound like an 11 year old boy, I'm okay and uh, don't worry about me. And we're just gonna to press on with my rules for my 2020 no buy year. I want to start by sharing with you the list, the long list of things that I absolutely cannot buy in 2020. And it's quite a long list. It's the longest list that I've written here. And the first thing on that list, you may not be surprised to know, is I am buying no Disney stuff no Disney stuff in 2020. And my channel is a Disney channel primarily, and I've done tons of Disney hauls and tons of Disney unboxings in the past, and I have more Disney stuff than I could possibly enjoy and use in like 10 lifetimes. So it's not that I don't wanna buy Disney stuff, it's not that I'm giving up Disney, it's not that I don't love Disney and beautiful Disney things anymore, but I just don't need any more Disney stuff. In fact, I have so much Disney stuff that I don't even know what I own. One of my goals for kind of the next couple of months is to really get a clear inventory of what I actually have so that I can declutter and pick out my very favorite things to keep. So first rule is no Disney purchases, and that includes no Disney mugs, no Disney t-shirts, no mini ears, no hats, no artwork, no crafts, and no Disney pins. No Disney pins! And and if you know me, you know that I absolutely love Disney pins. Disney pins are my very favorite Disney collectible. I have a collection of about 3,000 Disney pins currently, which is frankly insane for someone like me to own that many pins. There's no way I can possibly enjoy and appreciate them all. But I do have like a little asterisk like exception for Disney pins uh, for my no buy year. And here's the deal. From now until the very end of the summer, I am buying zero pins, zero pins. So if a pin comes out and I want it, I have to either skip it or trade for it. However, every August in Epcot, down in Walt Disney World, there is an annual pin trading event and it's like a big deal and it's super fun. And I've really enjoyed attending that event in the past. And I'm going to kind of wait and see when they announce the dates and they announce the catalog and they announce like more of the details if I'm feeling like I still want to attend this year. And I kind of feel like the pin event could go either way for me. Like I might be missing the whole Whole pin world so much by then that I just really want to treat myself to the Walt Disney World annual pin collecting event, in which case I will buy a ticket 
it. Along with your ticket comes a bunch of pins that they give you. And then you also have the opportunity to purchase some really special pins. And maybe I would buy like one or two pins for myself and maybe do some pickups for other people. However, I'm also very open to the possibility that I will lose interest in collecting pins to the sort of degree that I have been collecting them for the past couple of years. It's possible that the tickets will be released and the schedule be released and I'll just kind of not be feeling it, in which case I will probably have no problem skipping the annual Epcot pin event and I will not be purchasing any pins for the entirety of 2020. So I wanna leave myself a little bit of wiggle room there because I don't know where my heart's gonna be at in terms of pins six months from now and I'm not gonna make that decision right now. So I'm not buying any Disney things with the possible exception of attending the annual pin event and maybe purchasing a couple really special pins there. Next on my list, I have written books. I'm not going to purchase any books in 2020 with the exception of my audible.com subscription. This is not a sponsored video, I wish, by the way. I love listening to audiobooks and I pay a monthly fee for a credit for a new audiobook and I'm going to keep that, but I'm not going to purchase any physical, like hard copies of of books with pages that you turn. Mostly because I have more books on my shelves that are unread than I could possibly read in my entire lifetime. And so if I really wanna read a book where you turn the pages, I can just go to my bookshelf for that or go to the library or borrow a book from a friend. So I'm not purchasing any physical books and I am limited to one audible download per month because that is what my subscription pays for. The next thing on my no buy list for 2020 is solo coffees, solo coffee meaning I am not going to go by myself in my car through the Starbucks drive-thru to buy an iced coffee and a pastry anymore. I am not going to take a little mini treat yourself break in the middle of my workday and head to the coffee shop and get a little cold brew as a pick-me-up. I am not going to randomly buy a donut at the coffee shop or bakery either as a pick-me-up. I purchase the large jugs of Starbucks cold brew and I keep them in my fridge and all I have to do is take a to-go cup and pour my coffee in and take it with me throughout the day and then I don't have to go to Starbucks or wherever else I might go and buy their coffee for much more money and waste plastic cups and straws which are terrible for the environment. So I'll be using my reusable cups and cold brew that I buy at Target in bulk. And the only exception to the coffee rule is if I have a coffee date with someone, if it's a social occasion or it's a meeting and we're going out for coffee, then that's cool. Like I will buy a coffee and I'll probably take it for, for inside the shop so I don't have to waste the packaging. And that's a totally different thing. But I can't just be in this bad habit of like, forking over five or six or seven dollars here and there for coffee when I already have coffee in my fridge and I can just get it at home. Along those lines, I will not be purchasing any unhealthy snacks for myself midday. I'm not going to go to the grocery store and grab a cookie or a chocolate or some chips. Um, I told you a moment ago that sometimes I go pick up a donut. I love donuts and I have a total sweet tooth, but like oftentimes I'm by myself. I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling a little tired, like I need a little sugar, and then I go and get like a donut and I eat it probably in my car, like a psycho. And not only does it waste money, but it's like a lot of junk food going into my body, um, basically out of habit or because I'm feeling emotional. So I'm just not buying myself unhealthy snacks. It's not like I'm not gonna eat any treats this year, I will. If I'm going out to dinner and we decide to order dessert, or if I'm at a party and it's someone's birthday and there's cake, because I love birthday cake or you know whatever it's not like I'm never gonna eat sugar ever again but I'm just not going to like kind of slink into the coffee shop or the bakery and like buy a thing in the middle of the day just so I can feel better for 10 seconds while I eat it you know what I mean so that's on my no buy list as well the next thing on my list is kind of a large category that has historically been a problem area for me with spending and that is stationary I am NOT buying any stationary note cards notebooks pens, planners, like none of that stuff in 2020. I have stacks of notebooks that have like one or two pages written on or that are completely empty. I've got more pens than I know what to do with. I've got markers, I've got colored pencils. I have, I have drawers, literally drawers back there full of stickers, which I'm actually hoping to declutter uh, somewhat. And I am not going to purchase 
any paper goods, like really no paper goods uh, in the coming year. The exception to that might be a greeting card for somebody if it's a birthday or a special occasion, but I actually have a stack of unwritten greeting cards as well, so if I can find something that works for the occasion, I will use something that I already have. I think I'm going to save myself a lot of money by doing this because I have such like a, a weakness for cute papery items and um, I have more than I could ever use, so I'm not buying any stationery in 2020. Another thing that has historically been kind of a problem area for me um, is candles. Candles are something I also have a pretty big weakness for. I've almost always got a candle burning in my background. And I have so many candles that are just partially burned or that I haven't even started burning yet. And I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that the candles that I already own will get me through an entire year. Maybe I'll find out that I'm wrong about that, but I think I would have to burn candles at a much more frequent rate than I could currently burn them at to get through all of them in 2020. So candles, as much as I love them, are off limits this year for me. Let's see, what else is on my list? Um, souvenirs and trinkets, like little tchotchkes, little doodads, little souvenir type things, um, not just from Disney, but from anywhere. All that kind of stuff is is off my, my buying list for the coming year because I just have so much stuff. And I think I would rather treasure photographs and memories and I'm just not buying, not buying souvenirs, not buying tchotchkes anymore, at least not for, not for this year. We'll see how we do in, in the future. I do probably have a little bit of travel that is not Disney related in, in 2020. And so I wanted to cover, you know, the temptation I might feel to, even though I'm not spending on Disney souvenirs, to like buy magnets or postcards or, you know, whatever. So no souvenirs, no trinkets, no tchotchkes. The next thing on my no buy list is manicures. I have gotten into a really bad habit of getting my fingernails done with either gel or dip. And I was justifying it for a while by telling myself my hands are in front of a camera unboxing things all the time and no one wants to see like my crappy looking nails. And so I would just get manicure after manicure after manicure. And that has led to two things. One, I've spent a ton of money on getting my nails done in the past couple of years, like a ton of money. And it never lasts as long as I want, even though I've got like gel or they're supposed to last for a long time. It never really seems worth it because something always chips. Something always chips, even though it's like the good stuff. And problem number two is that all of the gel nail polish and the dip powder has like totally wrecked my nails. So when my manicure comes off, my nail beds look horrible. My nails look awful. And so I am committing, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. I am committing to a year of natural nails. This manicure that I have on right now, this is a gel manicure. Um, this is my last manicure for a year. And there's probably gonna be a few weeks or maybe even a month or two after this comes off that my nails look really scary. And I'm just gonna ask you to bear with me because I'm gonna let them heal. I'm gonna let them grow out. I've got a little, um like OPI Nail Envy, like nail strengthener that I'm gonna use on my nails, but I am no longer purchasing manicures. And if I do want painted nails for an occasion, I will paint them myself. What a concept. The next thing on my list is alcohol. I'm not buying alcohol anymore. I stopped drinking for the most part uh, in the summer, at the end of the summer. So I have no reason to buy alcohol because I'm no longer drinking it. And if you wanna save money in your life, pro tip, don't buy alcohol when you go out to eat because it literally like doubles your tab. It's crazy, crazy, crazy how much money I've already saved in the last few months just by not drinking. Um, so if you are someone out there that's like, how can I save money in 2020? Uh, cut down on your alcohol consumption. You might be surprised how much you save and you might also be surprised at how much better your sleep is and, and how much better you feel. So I'm not here to tell you what to do, but uh, quitting alcohol consumption has been a game changer for me in more ways than one. Next on my list of things I am not spending money on in 2020 are phone apps and computer apps and games, okay? I went into my iTunes uh, app store, not iTunes, Apple, iPhone, whatever app store today, and I looked at the ongoing like recurring subscriptions that I had that were charging me every month and I wasn't even noticing for like various in-app things I've subscribed to or whatever, did a trial of and then it like flipped over and started charging my credit card without me noticing. I canceled nine 
app subscriptions this morning nine app subscriptions and they were all charging me monthly and i'm guessing that i saved myself at least five hundred dollars no joke by just going in for two minutes and unsubscribing to the various apps that i had forgotten i was subscribed to the other thing i'm not spending money on app wise is like the phone phone game apps like the games that you play that have these very tempting in-app purchases like $2.99 here for some extra gems or $4.99 here for unlimited lives i'm not doing that anymore because that stuff really adds up and um i do have a couple phone games that i still am addicted to but i'm committed to no longer spending money on them and it would be awesome to quit them all together but if I'm being really honest, I quit them and then as soon as I have a flight somewhere, I like miss my phone game and I and I reinstall it. So I'm not going to give up phone games for good, but I am going to give up spending any money whatsoever on those sneaky Disney phone games. Next line on my list says handbags, accessories, and jewelry. I have enough bags, <laughs> Disney bags, regular bags, backpacks, etc., to last me for forever. I do not need any handbags. Um, I'm not a big accessories and jewelry girl, so I have no reason to buy it. So I'll not be spending money on handbags, accessories, or jewelry in 2020. Home decor is also on this list. That's not something that I typically buy a lot of other than Disney things anyway. I have all the Christmas stuff I could ever desire, so I have no reason to spend money on home decor, especially not seasonal home decor this year. Um, pet toys are on my list, cat toys, dog toys. Both my pets have more toys than like they could ever chew through in a million years, so not spending money on pet toys. The second to last thing on my absolute no buy list is subscription boxes. Da -da -da. I will tell you that the couple of Disney subscription boxes that I currently get, I am a brand representative for. I'm a brand rep for Bibbidi Bobbidi Boxes, and I'm a brand rep for Magic at Your Door, meaning those companies send me their boxes so that I can review them and share them with you. I have been a paid subscriber to both of them in the past, but I have built a relationship with those companies and they send me those boxes as PR. I'm not totally sure how I'm going to approach Disney unboxings that are sent to me as PR going forward. I have a little bit of soul searching I need to do on that. But what I won't be doing is spending money on any subscription boxes. And uh, in the past, I've gotten like FabFitFun, um, Boxy Charm, Stitch Fix, um, Bark Box, various things like that that I've paid money for. And honestly, I never end up using most of that stuff. I would say 80% of that stuff I don't end up using and it, it sits in a pile or it gets decluttered. So no subscription boxes, no Stitch Fix. I really didn't like Stitch Fix. I, I was using it for forever and I felt like I had to buy something sometimes or like I would pay for the box and then I would buy a piece of clothing that wasn't that great and I just kind of feel like the clothing that Stitch Fix sends you, the quality is not great for the price that they are charging and I had to give that up. So it's my little rant on Stitch Fix, but no more Stitch Fix, FabFitFun, BoxyCharm, Sephora Play, none of that stuff. And the last thing I have on my no buy list for 2020, like absolutely cannot buy, is, <laughs> this is really random, a very specific kind of protein bar. I have been getting these, these, um, Think Thin or Think Bars, like protein bars, and they're like these chocolate peanut butter protein bars, and I am not going to buy them again in 2020 because I'm addicted to these protein bars. And they're basically glorified candy bars, like they might have a slightly higher nutritional value than your average candy bar, but I suspect that they're actually really terrible for you. And this is just a random thing. I'm not buying Think Bars in 2020 because I need to break my addiction to those because they actually don't make me feel very good. And I just, I eat those instead of eating like things of actual nutritional value instead. And it's just a really bad habit. So this is not about spending money or decluttering. I just, I need to stop the habit of eating those, those Think Bars because I'm, I'm addicted. So that was my list of everything I am definitely not buying in 2020. I now have a much shorter list of things that I'm calling like a low buy for 2020. And these are things that I can spend money on, um, but I can either only get them as replacements or I actually have a really specific tight budget for a couple of these items that I've made for myself. Because these aren't areas that I have necessarily been spending extravagantly on. Um, I still want to kind of rein it in a little bit, but I also, um, I don't want this year to feel 
like a punishment and I don't want to go absolutely crazy, but I've put some boundaries in place with the following items so that I don't just transfer my bad shopping habits to these items. Um, mostly these are going to be like replacement and necessity type things. So things that I am low buying, things that I can buy, but with a lot of um, rules around them, um, I can buy clothes. I can buy clothes. And mostly I can buy clothes as replacements. I'm thinking of things like underwear, like plain white and black t-shirts, which are kind of a staple in my regular daily wardrobe. Um, jeans, if I get a hole in my jeans, I will buy a new pair of jeans to replace them. I really like to have a pair of nice new white sneakers every spring and summer, and they really only last through like spring and summer because they're, they're white, so I'll probably buy a pair of cute white sneakers because um, that's just kind of part of my part of my deal in the spring and summer, and they will be a replacement for my last year's white sneakers, if that makes sense. Um, so clothes are okay, and then also if something comes up that I really need, like I actually think I'm gonna need a swimsuit at some point, I can buy a swimsuit. Um, if I end up traveling or have an event of something that I kind of need something for, I might allow myself to buy one or two pieces per season, provided that it fits into the budget I've set for myself, and I'm also committed to not buying any fast fashion this year. So no Forever 21, probably not any Target clothes. I, I need to like make good wardrobe choices if and when I choose to add to my wardrobe. Um, and like I said, it's still going to be very low buy. So I'm thinking like maybe one or two pieces of clothes per season, if that. I'm, I'm really trying to focus on just the things that I need or focus on replacements. Same thing goes for makeup and skincare. I don't spend a ton of money on makeup and skincare. I have some kind of items that maybe are a little more high luxury than I need. Um, but I know a lot of people that are doing no buys on YouTube and on the internet are like beauty people and they just have like hordes and hordes of backups and all kinds of unused skincare and makeup. And I actually don't have that. So on a replacement only basis, I'm allowed to buy makeup and skincare. I'm not gonna be looking to like try out new products or try new looks this year. I'm a pretty minimal makeup person anyway. But if I run out of my skincare or if I run out of like my eyebrow pencil, which I use every single day, or my foundation, which I use every single day, I'm going to replace it. So those things are totally fine. That's basically it for the low buy portion of this video. Like I said, most of the stuff is about not buying and then I want to be able to have access to things that I like need and I don't want to like totally cut myself off at the knees entirely in terms of spending on stuff and being able to function. Um, and that brings me to kind of the final portion of this video, which which is the things that I can buy, the things that I'm allowing myself to spend money on in 2020. And I have set some budget parameters around these things as well. Um, some of it's based on what I spent last year and I'm trying to spend like under that amount, etc. I'm not going to get into the details of the budgeting. Maybe in a future video I will, but I've set some kind of like loose numbers for myself for the things that I can buy, which are food. I can buy food because I need to eat. And I can eat out meals sometimes, not by myself and not excessively, but for social situations, special occasions. You know, sometimes it's a matter of, you know, convenience. Like I need to pick up a salad somewhere in the middle of a big day. I'm allowed to spend money on groceries and also eating out within reason. So food is, food is A-OK. -okay. I am also allowed to spend money on on travel and travel is something that um, that I love doing and um, that I'm fortunate to be able to do sometimes I just renewed my Disney World annual pass so I have at least one or two Disney trips kind of in the works for 2020 so I am allowing myself to spend money on travel hopefully I'll be able to go places other than Disney this year as well I do have a pretty set like ceiling for travel budget this year. I might make a separate video about that. I don't know, but I, I have a limit that I've set for myself on how much I can spend on hotels and airfare. That is like an unbreakable limit and it should still allow me to travel quite a bit, but it won't be nearly as much as I spent on airfare and hotels last year and the year before. So I think it's like progress, but travel is important to me and I don't want to miss out on that. And, um, and I can probably afford to do a little bit of traveling without 
causing any problems in my life. Along those lines, I can also spend money on experiences. And of course, this is within reason. I'm not gonna go crazy just like going to the movies like every single night or even every single weekend, but I think it's great to be able to go out and enjoy time with friends. And I really want to focus on spending time with other people this year instead of spending time chasing things around. And part of that means that I might spend a little money here and there to go out with my friends or to spend time with my family going out to eat or catching a movie or you know going to a show or something that stuff's totally okay um, obviously I'm not gonna go crazy I'm gonna try to be responsible with my experiences budget but I'm allowed to do travel and experiences because to me those are much more enriching and satisfying things than than things Something else I can buy um, are haircuts and hair services, um, but I've got a limit. I've got a limit of one haircut per quarter, and I probably won't even do that many. I think I get my haircut on average like two to three times a year right now, and having my hair cut and like looking not too crazy is important to me, and I, I like my, my hair lady, so haircuts are okay. And also, I get my hair colored professionally like twice a year. Um, I am blonde underneath this. I'm a natural blonde, and when it starts to get really crazy like under here it doesn't look so good usually I do like my roots with like stuff that comes in a box but once or twice a year I do have to like go in and get it professionally done or else I just start to look like a crazy person so hair services within reason like on a set schedule are okay for me to spend money on also I am allowed to treat myself to pedicures periodically I'm giving up manicures um, but pedicures are kind of a different thing because I am a yoga teacher in my day job, I am barefoot with my feet near people's faces all day long, every single day. So it's important to me that my toes don't look nasty. And I also, because I'm barefoot so much, I get calluses and yucky stuff on my feet. And sometimes I'm able to do that myself with like a pumice stone or like a little scraper. And sometimes I have to get it taken care of professionally. So I'm gonna try to limit myself to, you know, between six and eight pedicures this year and I'm okay spending the money on that. I get a gel pedicure. It usually lasts like anywhere from six weeks to eight weeks. So that's like a, a good investment as far as I'm concerned. And it's part of my job uniform to not have nasty grimy feet. So I'm not making any space in my budget for manicures, but pedicures are okay within reason. Also with the pedicures, I do have a couple of good friends, they're mostly yoga friends, um, that I, I tend to catch up with socially over a pedicure, like we'll go together to get a pedicure, and in that way it's kind of an experience that I share with someone else. So pedicures are are on the, on the yes list. A couple other self-care things I can spend money on, obviously like personal hygiene and health stuff. Um, I'm going to keep my gym membership because working out honestly is so important for not only my physical health but also my mental health. Um, I'm going to be able to spend money on therapy, not excessive amounts of therapy, but therapy has been really helpful for me at various times in my life, including right now. So therapy is on the list, um, as is body work. And I don't get a lot of body work done, but I have a physical job. I'm a yoga teacher, as I said, and occasionally stuff gets icky and I need a massage or I need to see a chiropractor. I don't do that on a super regular basis, only when things are like bugging me, like when I have issues in my tissues, I'll go to the chiro or go to see a, a pretty serious massage therapist. And I'm willing to put those things into my budget because that has to do with health and, um, you know, legitimate self-care. Oh shoot, one thing I forgot to mention in the uh, low buy category um, also has to do with my job as a yoga teacher. I can buy yoga clothes when I need them uh, because like I said, I'm in a sweaty yoga room all day and I have a lot of yoga clothes, yoga pants, yoga top, but I tend to wear through those kind of quickly. I have a set budget for myself for for yoga clothes for work, but that's also on my, on my okay uh, slash low buy list. We're getting down there. Um, gifts, gifts for other people. I can spend money on gifts for other people. I have some budget parameters that I've set for myself on that, um, but I like being able to give lovely things to the lovely people in my life. Although I do plan on kind of looking for experiences to give people instead when I can. So that's kind of 
gonna be in my mind as I'm as I'm purchasing birthday gifts or holiday things or whatever for for people in my life the final kind of general thing on my okay to spend money on list is um, continuing education and that mostly applies to yoga or it might apply to maybe like an online course for like YouTube or editing or something um, but I do think it's important to invest in yourself as long as you follow through with the uh, investment that you've made so if I sign up for a course I should complete the course. Um, but I'm also due this as a yoga teacher to take some workshops or maybe some additional training and I'm hoping to do that this year and that's a good investment for me financially. So continuing ed opportunities are okay. On top of those kind of broad categories, the broad can buy categories, food, clothes, self care, there are two kind of big purchases that I will be saving up for this year that are necessities um, that I'm kind of anticipating that are gonna be okay. So the first thing is I know I am going to need a new laptop this year. My current computer is super old. It's like stone age old. It crashes on me all the time. It's like messed up my YouTube stuff and I've lost footage a bunch of times. So getting a new laptop is at the top of my wish list and I will allow myself to purchase one with cash that I've saved uh, in 2020. So that's, that's one of them. And the second big purchase that I will likely need to make this year is a new car. Not like a brand new car, but like I need to replace my old car because my old car is in the same state. It's, um, <laughs> it's kind of getting to be diminishing returns. It, it, it needs maintenance a lot. It kind of might not make it through the winter. And at some point I will need a new vehicle and I will try to make a very smart, responsible purchase uh, with my vehicle choice. I've been doing some research about how to shop for, for new used cars. And so that'll be on my list as well. Laptop okay, car okay, because they are uh, in the category of necessity for me as a YouTuber and as a Minnesotan who cannot walk outside all winter in uh, below zero temperatures. <laughs> Whew, that was a lot of lists and a lot of rules. And I do have a couple other things written down um, as kind of guidelines for myself. A couple other YouTubers talked about, you know, what happens when someone gives you a gift or a gift card, is that okay? So as far as gift cards are concerned, if somebody gives me a gift card and I wanna just spend it how I wanna spend it, I'm okay with that. It was a gift and that might be like my more treat yourself moments and I honestly, people don't give me gift cards that often but if I were to receive a gift card to like the Disney store or to Sephora or to whatever like I would enjoy the gift card on on something that I wanted although if I did get a Disney gift card I probably would use it on a trip like toward a, a meal in one of the parks anyway so gift cards are okay um, gifts are okay of course it's nice to receive gifts I do want to say um, something about subscriber gifts and my PO box I will be closing my YouTube channels PO box um, in April uh, my contract expires with my 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 lease on my PO box uh, at the end of April. So come April, I will no longer be taking magic mail. Um, I've, I've loved the years of beautiful mail that people have set, sent to me, um, but because I'm looking to downsize a little bit, I'm gonna sort of let that taper off and, and close my P.O. box. Um, I'm also going to allow myself to receive PR from people, you probably usually Disney companies that like to work with me. I'm not sure now that I've kind of changed some of the focus of this channel if those opportunities will peter off, but I will be accepting PR at least for a while still. Maybe I'll shut that down when I close my PO box. I haven't decided yet. Same thing with the um the box companies that I work with. I'm going to continue to work with them in some capacity, although it might change or it might be less frequent. So those were some kind of strange like special scenarios that I wanted to create rules around for myself and I'm feeling pretty comfortable with those. And with that, I think I have covered just about everything. Did I miss anything? Leave a comment down below if I missed something because I wanna make sure that I've covered my bases, but um, I really think that I have. I hope this has been interesting for you. It's definitely been an interesting process for me just to make those lists and kind of talk my way through uh, the why for, for all of those things. I hope if you are planning on doing any kind of intentional consumer project or declutter project or spending you know, challenge in the new year that you find some of this useful and helpful and I will look forward to updating you hopefully with 
quite a lot of regularity on how the whole thing goes. Thank you so much for your support on this, everyone. I was overwhelmed by the number of wonderful comments um, and helpful comments and suggestions I received on the last video I uploaded, which was kind of like the why and the goals for my no buy year, which I'll link to uh, down in my description box in case you missed it. I really appreciate you all, and it's really cool to know that a lot of people are in a similar place with me in terms of spending and consuming, and that a lot of people will be taking this journey or a similar journey with me in 2020. That's all I have for you today. I hope you had a magical and safe New Year's celebration and that 2020 is off to a beautiful, fresh, and healthy start for you. I'll be back with more varying kinds of content in the near future. Until then, have a magical day, magical new year, and I'll see you real soon. Bye guys. Mwah.